cider blossom orchard. I wanted to bring you to the top of the garden. I'm gonna prune some trees here on the tall spindle today. And remember, it's all about getting air into the tree. It's all about getting sunlight into the tree. And I'm gonna show you how easily that is done here with the tall spindle. It's a beautiful day today, about 55 degrees, wall to wall sunshine. I couldn't ask for a better day to be out here and I need to get these trees pruned. Uh, things are starting to get uh, a little bit happy again. I know I keep saying that every video, but um, I, I'm really leery. I'm going to have to get into the books and check and see just how far ahead we are this spring, but I know we're ahead. Um, let's prune some trees. Okay, so tall spindle. I've got some newer trees in this line, and I've got some older trees. This is a honey crisp. Been in here for about probably eight years now. This one's actually run it out a little bit. Um, you can see last year's growth really didn't do much. It uh, grew maybe, I don't even think it grew six inches last year. Uh, had a little bit of a crop on it, so I'm, I'm thinking this year it ought to grow some more. Honey crisp is one of these biennial trees. If you overcrop it, you won't get much the next year. But uh, hey, that's, that's not why we're shooting this video. We're shooting to prune. So the first two things I'm looking at are uh, what branches do I want to take out and then forks in the tree. There's a saying in the apple pruning business, forks belong on a plate, not on an apple tree. So I'm looking for offensive branches. Um, this one right here, I don't much care for. You can see this is an old cut. If you want to come over here, Luke, you can see this is an old cut that I made probably two years ago. And this was the shoot that was probably already here at the time that uh, went ahead and grew on that one. Now it's become overly vigorous. So I'm gonna cut it back. There's a little side shoot here. Uh, this is an old cut right here above it. You can see a little shoot. That's what we're looking for, is these little darts coming out of there with uh, a fruiting bud on the end of it. I believe that is anyway. So I'm gonna get in here and cut off this first one right here I'm going to come in from underneath remember we want regrowth on these cuts so I'm going to come in from underneath and just take that out like that so right there we open up this side of the tree I can't reach around to the other side I'll actually come up the other side here in just a minute as I I come back but I think um I think that's all I'm going to do from this side of the tree. Now, I look up and I'm looking for, this is a good example here of, of a fork. Um, you can see how this branch is basically split into two right here. You got this Y, so I can choose to keep the portion here that's uh, dangling more that I like just because of that position, but I like the newer growth that's it's definitely got the fruit buds on it. So I'm gonna take out this piece here on the bottom. I'm gonna take out this upright right here and uh, maybe even this other piece over here that's a little bit of a fork. So just following up, you can see even how this branch right here has got a fork. All of that in the top of the tree actually, yeah, that's not too bad, that casts shade down below. And so those are the things that we're trying to take out. Um, Here's a fork here. Take that out. And of course, here on the end of this one, this uh, this branch will be coming out next year for sure. Okay, so we're going to move down. This is another honey crisp. Uh, probably more thinning than anything on this tree because I don't see any branches. You're looking for something that's about half the diameter of the central leader. That's where you would start. I don't see that really too bad here. Um, there's one growing down pretty low, uh, straight into this other tree. So I'll take that one out. Sometimes it's hard to get that great angle on those cuts. So uh, this one here's margin. I can see on the other side one that I'm going to want to take out. Um, I believe I'm, I'm okay. Let's look for some forks. Maybe take that out there. Um, Remember, all these side shoots grow leaves, and leaves shade things down below. So the vigor of these honeycrisp being pretty low, um, they don't tend to 
do too badly, but I do want to thin this one out just a little bit. We got a we're pretty busy right here, and this is this would be another classic Y. You can see, I'll just pull that out a little bit. You can just see how much real estate this little branch takes up. So I'm going to cut one of these off. That's the whole idea. Just cut that off, and okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay, so here we have two crimson crisp trees. Uh, I don't believe I did anything with this one yet. So looking at this tree, I don't see any branches that really violate the diameter rule. So again, I'm kind of looking at thinning cut and just looking to take out forks. And then if you look into the top of the tree, you can see what we call crop and flop. Uh, the top of that tree has basically bent over with the weight of a crop, and that's what we want to see. That takes the vigor out of the tree. And I don't have to get up there and really prune anything in the top of the tree, although I see a vigorous shoot. Go ahead and take out and forks while I'm up there. But the uh, top of that tree doesn't look too bad. May go ahead and take out a top branch here just to thin a little bit. Okay, just looking for forks now so we can take out some of the shading from down below. And just a little bit too much going on right there. Here's an old piece of fruit right there that really never developed last year. We want to get those out of the tree because uh, that's what we call mummified fruit and that's just a prime place for bacteria to start this year. Uh, bitter rot, bitter pit would be a problem leaving these in the trees. It's hard to get them all out but uh, we do, I do get them out when I see them. Okay so uh, again just Taking out some of the forks. Reduce shading. And I think I'm happy with that. Okay, moving on to the next um, crimson crisp. I can see some problems on the other side of the tree enough that I don't believe I'm doing anything on this side of the tree. Although this branch here is just a little bit low. Um, to get some fruit on there, we're going to be down like this. So I'm probably going to go ahead and take that out. Okay. Here is a root sucker. I want to get out of there. All right. Now we'll just take out. Um, so here's some more mummified fruit on this branch. Go back there. Not too bad. I'm gonna have to extend my clippers to get up here into the top and do some good. This is a tree that could use a little more of the top work. Um, I don't think I'll be able to reach that with what I've got. I could stand to bring a ladder out here on this one. Just because uh, it's really getting a little taller than the wire, the top, top wire, and I don't want that. I'll take out this branch up here from the other side. Not too crazy about that. Take out that fork. Um, maybe this one here has just gotten a little bit long. And we got so much going on up there. Thin that out. Okay, got a straight up here. Another one straight up. You see how the weight of some crops have really brought these limbs down. That is ideal. Limbs and crisp, real, it'll crop pretty heavy. It's done nice for me. I'm not going to work on those over there because I'm cutting those completely out on the other side as, as well as this sucker right here. Okay, Luke. Um, I'm satisfied. Let's move down. 
These trees are not that old. I just planted them in. Actually, I regrafted that one. This one was planted in two years ago. Some more apple lingo. This tree's in its third leaf on this tall spindle row. I don't know how old the tree is because we graft trees onto rootstocks. We don't know how old the rootstocks are when they're grafted, but you can assume that if the rootstock's a year old and then the tree is budded or grafted onto that rootstock, it's grown out in the nursery for a couple of years. Well, by the time I get it, it may be two or three years old. So what uh, you hear uh, in the business is that a, a tree's on its third leaf and that's, that's saying from the time I planted it in this row, this will be the third time that it's put on leaves in the spring. And that gives you a little better idea. Of course, you can see how this tree is young and still making vegetative growth versus uh, fruit buds, but it did have some fruits on it last year. It will again. It doesn't take long for these dwarf trees to start putting on fruit. Um, this is kind of an interesting one here that I grafted a couple of years ago. Uh, the original graft had died and it's, this is just a very weak growing tree but it's in there anyway come on down to the jana golds uh, this jana gold i don't see any trees again this is one that's slowed down growing just a little bit too much too soon maybe overcropped it a little bit but uh, just looking at some forks here take out and not going to do anything with this branch. I'm probably not going to cut out any big branches on this tree. Now you come over here, I can see one right off. Um, this guy right here, it's not terrible, but I want to take that limb out of there. So again, sometimes it's hard to get to the best angle. that out of there um, yeah I can get another year out of that one really nothing here that bugs me too much Luke a little bit of a fork going on over here let's see how these how these trees are so I tell you there's one up there at the top I want to take out this guy right here He's about half the size of the diameter up there. Definitely casting shade down here. So out he comes. Hopefully get some new growth there. Jonah Gold's a good apple here in southern Indiana. It doesn't collar up real well. But uh, very good eating apple. Okay, a lot of work on the other side. This happens to be a gold rush. And look, this is just a good example of a, a limb that should have been pruned last year. You can see a, we've just about got a Y, a fork in the main trunk. And that's something you don't want. Uh, I don't think it was that bad last year, but this has really taken the nutrients and now it's nearly the size of the central leader. So no doubt about it, that one's got to come off. for a cut there we'll get some pretty vigorous regrowth out of that um, it's still a young tree so I'm not going to take off too much pretty vigorous stuff there in the top of the tree I don't like okay so that's uh that's pruning the tall spindle just down one side and I skipped some of the smaller trees but it goes pretty quick you can get through a lot of trees pretty quick definitely not like pruning semi-dwarf apple trees. Uh, I'll be done here in about five or ten minutes with this row of 15 trees. Really, it's just not a problem.